All right, welcome to chapter five. We're talking about probability distributions. And later in chapter five, we're gonna talk about specific types of probability distributions that apply to specific situations. But 5-2 is just the overview of talking about the basic idea of what does a probability distribution mean? What are we talking about when we say that? Um, so two warnings coming up. There's a lot of examples in this chapter that deal with uh, boys and girls, and it assumes just a binary gender, which isn't ideal these days. It doesn't match our understanding, but um, they're going to assume just boys and girls, and they're going to assume that uh, the birth rate is 50% for each. Um, so there's one warning. Uh, second warning is you're about to see a really old picture of me, so prepare yourself. Here we go. Uh, there's me and my two sisters, uh, three kids in my family, and one boy and two girls. And I know other families you know, have different distributions, even other families with three kids, obviously. There could just be all girls, or there could be two boys and one girl, whatever. Um, so when you have three kids in a family and assuming that boys and girls are 50-50 probability, um, this is the table of probabilities for what could happen. Um, and keep in mind, we've seen this word distribution before when we talked about frequency distributions, and that just meant a table that gave you the frequencies. Now we're just looking at a table that gives you the probabilities. Um, so when you have three kids in a family um, and you have zero boys, uh, that'll happen about 12.5% of the time. And when you have one boy and two girls, uh, like my family, that'll happen about 37.5% of the time. Um, so this is a probability distribution. Uh, these numbers on this side are referred to as the random variable. And the random part comes from the fact that it's chance, whether you get a boy or a girl each time. So the total number of boys that you get is, is random, is chance. In the random variable, at least for the probability distributions that we're gonna be looking at, um, has to be numeric. So there's a decent number of questions in the homework that just say, is this a probability distribution? Yes or no? And if they have something over here like eye color and they have blue and brown and green and stuff, you'll say that's not a probability distribution, even though you could talk about the probabilities of having blue eyes. Uh, but it's not, there's no random variable over here on the left-hand side. So the random variable has to be numeric. Um, and then the other condition to be a probability distribution is that the probabilities over here, uh, first of all, should add up to one. Uh, if they don't, you've left something out. And granted, uh, with rounding, it can add up to like, you know, something like 0.999. Uh, and that's okay. Uh, it's okay if that came from rounding. But particularly, basically it should add up to one. And also, each number here uh, should be a legitimate probability. So in other words, no negative numbers and no numbers bigger than one. Okay, um, so that's the basic requirements, these three things here. Uh, let's see, we've got, got to have a, a random variable on this side. It has to be numeric. Uh, it has to, probabilities have to add up to one, and the probabilities have to be legitimate probabilities. So in your homework, when they ask, um, is this a legitimate probability distribution, you'll check those three things. Um, my good friend that teaches at Skagit Valley College, uh, Jose. Um, he has five kids in his family and they're all girls. Um, so the probability distribution for a family of five looks like this. And the uh, probability of having zero boys out of five uh, is just about 3%. 
um, which makes it unlikely, by the way. Keep in mind our basic definition of unlikely is less than 5%. Um, but Okay, let's get that out of here. Okay, so beyond just saying, is it a probability distribution, yes or no, once we've said yes, it is, uh, the next question, next two questions really, are going to be, um, what's the mean of this probability distribution? And what's the standard deviation? Um, and there's formulas for those things. Um, but let's talk about what they actually mean. <laughs> when you talk about finding the average or the mean of a probability distribution, what you're talking about is saying, hey, if you took lots and lots and lots of families with three kids and averaged their number of boys, what would you expect the average to be? Uh, and the formula for doing that is saying, let's take each outcome, like zero, um, and multiply it by the probability of that happening, and then add it all up, and that will actually give you the average. Uh, so we should take one or zero times 0 0.125, and one times 0.375, and two times 0.375, and three times 0.125. Uh, so multiplying those out, uh, that's zero, obviously. That's 0.375, and two times 0.375, here's where I need a calculator. Uh, that's 0.75. So many noises. Um, and 3 times 0.125. It's 0.375. Uh, and if you add all four of those numbers up, uh, you get 1.5, uh, which kind of makes sense uh, because these probabilities are symmetric. Uh, they're not weighted more heavily toward boys or toward girls. Uh, it makes sense that from a span of 0 to 3 uh, that the average would be 1.5. Um, but that's the formula for any probability distribution. And let's also look at getting the standard deviation. You say, okay, great. So if you average lots and lots of families uh, with three kids, you get an average of 1.5 boys. Uh, how much spread is there around that though? So let's look at the standard deviation. And the formula for standard deviation, and these formulas are in your book, by the way, they're on page, uh, page 200. Uh, so the uh, formula for standard deviation says, let's take each number uh, and subtract it from the mean. So let's do, so the mean's 1.5. So let's do 0 minus 1.5. And let's do 1 minus 1.5. And 2 minus 1.5. And 3 minus 1.5. So we're getting the deviations there. Um, and then we're squaring each one. If you remember how we did standard deviation back in the day, uh, this is the same idea. Um, and the only real change here is then we get to multiply by that, by each one of those by the probability and say, how often does that particular thing happen? So this happens 12 and a half percent of the time and this happens 0.375% of the time and so does this. And so does this one. Um, and this is a little bit more calculator work. Uh, so I'm actually going to pause the video for a second here and grab my calculator and then I'll come back. Okay, I'm back. So I did each of these multiplications. Uh, keep in mind order of operations. So do the squaring, well do the subtraction inside the parentheses first, uh, then square that, then multiply that by 0 0.125. Uh, so I multiplied each of these out and uh, just added them up and got 1.875. Uh, 
and that is the variance. Um, so keep in mind we still need to get the standard deviation. So the last step in finding that standard deviation was to take the square root of 1.75. So let's do that. Uh, let's do 1.75 and get the square root. And that's about 1.37. Uh, so 1.37. And of course, the last thing we can do once we have mean and standard deviation is to talk about whether something's usual or unusual in terms of being two standard deviations away from the mean. And the homework will ask you to do that. So uh, let's get that rule of thumb idea here again. And say if the middle is 1.5, and if we go two standard deviations up, and a standard deviation is 1.37, and then another 1.37. So 1 1.5 plus 2, 1.37. So 1.5 um, plus 1.37 plus 1.37. That's about 4.24. Uh, 4.24, and we could do the same thing in the other direction, um, which is actually going to give you something slightly negative. Um, but the um, average number of boys out of three kids is 1.5, and to be unusual out of three kids, you'd have to have more than 4.24. So there's there's nothing, no possible outcome that can be unusual in this particular case. Uh, that will be different with different probability distributions. Okay, I think you are fully ready to do the homework now.